Everybody, welcome back to Soul Speak with Jenny Israel. We are here to do our forecast, our energy forecast for the month of December 2021. It's the end of the year, but it's the beginning of a new cycle. So, you know, <laughs> I've been inside my own bubble, um, you know, for the, the last couple of weeks. And not that I haven't been receiving messages, um, but I definitely am um, just as curious as you are as to what the cards are going to tell us for this month. Um, there is a genuine sense of urgency around starting something new. There is this energy of um, death, you know, that we've been working through over the course of this, um, you know, the Scorpio season that we were in, and then going into um, eclipse season, um, really emphasizes uh, those things that we need to let go of the things that um, need to die off in order to make room for all of the blessings and new beginnings that we've been calling in. So, um, I actually already used the word curious, uh, as I was shuffling one of the decks I'm going to be using today. Um, this was the card that fell out. Um, and the card is get curious. Um, this is a new deck for me. Um, you're going to be using two new decks, um, for me today, both gifts from my soul sister Magda, um, as early Christmas gifts, which, um, I had been salivating over four months and she didn't even know. So it was a very divinely timed gift and I'm super excited to use them. Um, but this card of get curious, I think is, is a really good one to start with, um, because, we are moving into a, a very strong mental space and this mental space is the, the productivity and the power around this new mental space has everything to do with our perspective and the way that we approach things. So if we are approaching life through more of a curiosity, what we will do naturally is kind of detach from the, the deep emotional chaos or what we would consider drama of whatever it is that we're inside of. If we're curious about it and we're asking questions and we're like, hmm, kind of coming up and observing it from the outside, it gives us a leg up as far as really being able to utilize the balance of our energetic anatomy, meaning these various levels of intelligence that we get to tap into. You know, we have our human intellect, right? Which is the considered the, the rational mind. And then we have the higher intellect, that spiritual consciousness, that spiritual intel intellect that we come in with as souls. And then we have the emotional intelligence that connects the heart and the head together. And, you know, the equipment inside of our body, those emotions are so important because they are navigational compasses that are attempting to show us what we need to do, what we need to look at, where do we need to go? What are we gonna do next? Um, how are we interacting with our world and, and inside of our relationships? So this, this idea of curiosity um, matches with the, this energy, this incoming energy of revolution that's been building. And I knew that revolution would be a theme of the December reading. I just was very interested to see how that would all flesh out. So I think this is a nice way to start because we are getting into revolutionary thinking, which is pulling ourselves up out of that hole that we tend to get ourselves in inside of our own stuff, right? Um, and instead approaching these new things that are coming in and even the old old things that are trying to leave with curiosity, because it is going to give us some balance. So I, I do like to pull an archetype card from the Carolyn Miss deck um, to get a feeling for potentially the personality um, of, of the month that, you know, might, might help us, uh, because these cards give the light attribute of the archetype, and they also give the shadow attribute. And we've got to look at both, right, to maintain that balance. Okay. The mother. Um, I, this is perfect. <laughs> uh, well, it, it always is, isn't it? Um, but the reason why is because I do feel like 
you know, when we, we go into eclipse season, it's kind of like that entry point. And, you know, I always say that the 1111 gateway in November is kind of our new year's Eve, um, new year's day, as we start to really pull in the incoming year's energy and the eclipse season is, is certainly a big portal of starting to reflect on the next year and what it is, you know, inside of that new moon solar eclipse, um, that we always get at the beginning of December as as to what are we what are we starting to think about manifesting um, for the incoming year and for 2022 i've already started to touch on this but the the general energy of that 2022 when we reduce it to six there is this sense of the cosmic mother the divine mother um the triple two and that you know two being relationship right you know two being our duality um and two being the balance of the head and the heart, you know, the, the intellect and the emotions, um, but tripled that that master triple two um, reduces to six. And, you know, we start to see a different energy, different foundational energy coming in to play with this two energy. And it is very much cosmic mother, divine mother energy, um, which is good because we've done so much exposing of our inner child um, over the course of this last year in particular really like the last 18 months that we need a mother you know and we need that nurturing we need to be felt we need to feel secure we need to feel loved we need to feel nurtured you know we need that caretaking energy around us as we're going through some of the most vulnerable points of our experience you know we're we are i think because we live we're living through it right in this this aid this pandemic age we're we're living through it day to day we're just doing the best we can that we don't often stop to think about the repercussions of this on a psychological and emotional level. I think it's becoming more mainstream now as far as the, the awareness and the focus around mental health and emotional health inside of this situation where we all feel a deep loss of control um, and we're all feeling a little lost. But nevertheless, we've been pushed into this spiritual journey in one way or another, where we're really starting to become more aware of our spiritual selves, um, our relationship with something bigger than ourselves, whether you call that God or higher power or source or your higher self, whatever that looks like, it's becoming more of a prominent theme as we start searching for a deeper purpose in life, something that will make enrich our experience and make life worth living inside of a world that is quite challenging. Um, and so this mother energy that's going to be coming in with December is very appropriate is to initiate us into um, the new year. So the light attributes of the mother card, nurturing, patience, unconditional love, joy and giving birth to life, shadow attributes, smothering or abandoning children, instilling guilt in children for becoming independent. So we've got to make sure that we look at both sides of this. Um, the six energy is equated to that cancer energy, right? Like that cancer vibration. Um, and, you know, cancers are naturally um, have a maternal vibration to them being very nurturing um, and being service oriented. You know, there's a lot of that um, community oriented, but when we move into an unbalanced place, we are, we become so self-sacrificing that we are, we're, we're just kind of bleeding out energy. And then that triggers victim energy within, and it triggers all of our codependent, um, patterns of behavior in order to regain control of energy that we've given away too freely, right? So, you know, there's, we, we must also recognize our, ourselves um, as our own mother, um, mothering ourselves from the perspective of making sure that we are nurturing ourselves, loving ourselves, setting healthy boundaries for ourselves, um, you know, making time for play, you know, that kind of thing. And, and so this is, this is a good awareness to have as we're going into the giving season, right? All right. So I'm going to pull a couple um, cards from this new deck. 
Um, and I was guided to use these because of this deck in particular. Um, for those of you who follow my Instagram channel and, and watched my solar eclipse video that I did live, um, I was using this deck and talked a little bit um, about this particular symbol here, which if I'm hoping you can see it, it's kind of, you know, that gold and silver foil on there. And you know this idea of the 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 snake eating its own tail. This is an ancient symbol, and this symbol is about death and rebirth. It's about um, order being born of chaos, of the cycle of you know destruction and creation and recreation. So still that you know death, birth, rebirth cycle. Um, you know there there's fertility meaning behind this. Um, so I feel like this couldn't be more appropriate for this month because it is the ending of a year, but it's also the beginning of something new. Um, so, and there's lots of really cool symbols in this deck. So we're going to start with this particular deck and pull a couple of cards to get us started for the energy of November or of December rather. We start with Sagittarius energy. And we end with Capricorn. Uh, the Queen of Wands. You see the lion and the ram's horns on that crown being having the wand kind of pierced through that crown with the rays of the sun around the top. Um, the, the wands, well, I'm just going to read from the book because this is a new deck and I, I really, I love to explore, um, the author's interpretation of the tarot, um, because each one has their own approach and the writing in this deck is really actually quite nice. Okay. So sovereign of wands, empowerment, confidence, and warmth. The Sovereign of Wands indicates, which is the Queen of Wands, indicates an abundance of energy and multitasking, but you are definitely up for it and capable. You feed off the movement and are excited about all of the opportunities. You're most comfortable when creating. This card signifies that the good things are in the works. You may be finding that people are just drawn to you. The Sovereign of Wands has an energy that people want to be close to. You hold an important space in community and serve others well. However, do be mindful of your relationships. They should be balanced and easy. The Sovereign of Wands invites you to allow yourself to be at all, to be motivated, brave, loving, radiant, and creative, to know your strengths, to pro proclaim them, and carry your knowing proudly. Sometimes we have moments where we feel really good and it is easy to believe this about ourselves, but many struggle with the hold the withholding that feeling indefinitely. How can you stay in touch with your magic and magnificence, even when your shadow wants to pull you down? So this is where I would say, coming back to this idea of curiosity, um, the Sovereign of Wands, the, the Queen of Wands is associated with the element of fire. So we do look at this as our creative endeavors, our passions, our purpose. Um, it has to do with relationships as well. You know, there's, there's a lot of really interesting dynamics in this you know, moving into this month where we start to feel a sense of being motivated again, right? And and enough power, like we kind of got our stuff together now and like, you know, where maybe there was no clarity before, now we're starting to get a feeling. Um, maybe we're, we're feeling a little safer taking some risks. You know, we're, we're, we're feeling a little safer just going ahead and getting started. Whereas we've really been in this holding pattern for quite some time with a lot of things. And there this, this creative spirit that starts to kind of move this creative energy um, to try something new, do something that really is just for you, right? That's really driven from the fire in your belly. It's not another person saying, you know, you should do that, or you should try this, or you, it really is coming from you, this, this desire to express, right? When we've really have felt 
this heaviness and this weight and, and being in the shadow for so long. It's like finally coming out into the sun and being able to connect with that life force energy and really feel it in our bodies and be able to move forward in a really confident way with that. Um, I love that we've got the, the divine feminine you know, symbols showing up. We've got the queen, we've got the mother. Um, so, you know, again, starting to kind of feel this divine feminine energy, this cosmic mother energy that's coming in to give us some, some really much needed um, space and, and nurturing and to just feel good. Okay. So next card, we have another wands card. Um, the six of wands. Interesting. We've got the a triangle here, the, the, the trinity, right? Well, six is the double three, if we want to look at it like that, um, which is kind of the ascended master level of our path of self-mastery, where we've kind of come into an understanding, a deeper understanding of self and our world. It's like the inner trinity versus the outer trinity. Um, that six energy also really aligning with that six energy like I was talking about of the, the divine mother, this incoming year. So let's take a look at what um, she wrote in, in her little book here. Success, victory, and pride. The six of wands is an acknowledgement of a public victory or an external success that you have achieved. I'm gonna stop there for a second. This is this is one of the things where you know we start to really feel that the the this incoming year is going to allow us with this Taurus energy in our north node to really actually start to bring things into the material realm, meaning we're actually manifesting um, some of these things that we've been thinking about and our deep desire and passionate connection with those things is what's going to bring them out quicker because Taurus, you know, really is about deeper purpose and pleasure. And like when we get into that pleasure center of the body, that is the soul, that's the, the sacral chakra. That is the area of the womb, the area of fertility, the area of creativity of birth and rebirth. Um, you know, this, the, where the, the child lives within us, our emotions, you know, our intuitive gifts, you know, all of those things, um, deep in our, in our belly and, you know, not being able to externalize that purpose until we have really internalized that within our own unique design. And what I mean by that is God brought you into this world at an exact time with the planets all in a perfect place and the stars all in a perfect place to make you who you are. You know, this is where it's, it's a wonderful time to explore your astrology and look at your natal chart so you can see what your North node is um, and what your South node is, you know, as we're, we're looking at this shift for ourselves inside the, into new North node, South node energy for the next 18 months. Um, and really taking a look at what challenges did you come in with and what is your purpose to manifest them into the world in a beautiful way, um, in a purposeful way to be able to experience life in an, in a pleasurable way. Um, and so this idea of, being able to finally this month start to externalize some of that um, is going to really be able to, to give us some relief. It means that you've continued to persevere through challenges and uncertainties, and it has paid off in a major way. That has basically been this entire year, hasn't it? The Six of Wands encourages you to be proud of what you have accomplished and do not downplay it. You deserve it. This card also invites you to be optimistic at any challenges that may lay afoot. Expect or prepare for success and cultivate that as a true outcome. In some cases, the Six of Wands can carry a warning to be careful of your relationship with success. You are not at the end of your journey and there is more to come. It is important to not let your achievements get to your head and inflate your ego. So this is talking about really making sure that you're digging into all that you've learned from the challenges that you've that you've come from and and holding on to that humility because yes the successes that were are coming of those challenges you deserve all of it but it's it's not to inflate you 
or make you prideful, um, you know, or to hold it above another's head. This is to be able to appreciate how much you've grown and how far you've come, but in still having the, the humility, knowing where you were in order to get where you are now. Now may be a good time to check in on relationships with success. What does success mean to you and how do you define it? Do you react to both success and challenges in a neutral way? Or do you jump on a roller coaster and allow your ego to grow and shrink in relation to what is happening? Examine yourself in a curious way. There's that word curious again. You'll be better prepared for more successes and to easily traverse any challenges. If you are secure in your relationship with yourself. Like that. All right. Um, I'm going to pull one more from this particular deck before I move on. Sovereign of Cups, another queen. Another queen card. And there's a little pearl inside. It looks like kind of a champagne flute. And then the crown above it. The Sovereign of Cups in this particular deck, the Sovereign is the queen. The cups being the suit of uh, water um, associated with our emotions um, and all, all things related to that. Also, you know, when we think of um, water, it's kind of inside that realm of that mother energy still kind of moving in that divine feminine direction. All right, so cups, sovereign of cups. Intuitive, kind, and em empathetic. The Sovereign of Cups is a holder of space. They're perceptive, intuitive, nurturing, warm, and heart-centered. They can anticipate needs and provide a container for healing to occur. This represents a person in your life. Do not fear or leaning into them for support. If your feeling is that it represents you, this card could be calling you to more deeply step into your intuitive and healing arts. This card indicates that whatever is happening for you right now, it is important that you use your intuition. Try turning off your rational brain and connecting with your internal compass and heart. Try not to default into logic, which can happen when we are trying to figure things out. Trust that your intuition will not lead you wrong. So we can really start to see the the, the balance um, that is attempting to come in as we're exploring this new version of ourselves that's being birthed out into the world. And to really connect with our emotions in a productive and creative way. Um, the land, the, the land of imagination is also the land of our intuition, um, allowing ourselves to dream, allowing ourselves to create in that space, allowing ourselves to feel into it. Um, but you know, this, this idea of curiosity inside of it, um, allows us to stay just above that area of where the ego could potentially drag us down beneath, right? Drag us down into that shadow again. So it's like being able to finally feel safe enough to explore this new authentic self, um, staying in a vulnerable place so we can access our emotion and access our intuition in a much more fluid way so we're, we're feeling into this month in, into really starting to engage inside of these new tools of self, um, you know, kind of this jump into, because there's, there's risk here, right? There's like this feeling of like, ooh, that's like the soft underbelly, you know, like really allowing ourselves to go there um, and attempt to see life in a different way that isn't so logical because a lot of what's going on right now, none of it makes sense. You know, I've heard, heard so many people say that I've even said it. It's like, you see one thing and then you see another thing and you're like, those things don't match. Like, I don't under, like, this doesn't make sense. Like what, what is trying to be achieved right now? Because there's all kinds of mixed signals going on. Um, and that's inside and outside of us. And so, you know, this, this idea of, you know, kind of jumping out and taking a risk and saying, you know what, 
you know, life is too short for me to wait for all of that to make sense. So I'm going to go ahead and go my own way with this. <laughs> you know, I've worked really hard this year in, in becoming this new version of myself, striving to be the more authentic version of myself. And I'm not going to waste any more time. Um, and it is the jumping off the cliff, right? It's like, I'm, I am now I've jumped and now I am going to soar. Um, and kind of that, you know, throwing caution to the wind, so to speak of like, you know, I've, I've waited, I've waited enough. Um, and it's, it's time to go. And I'm just going to trust that, you know, I'm, I'm going to be okay in this. And the reason why we're starting to feel a little safer is because of this mother energy that's starting to come in for us. I want to, I'm going to pull a couple of cards from the Akashic Tarot. Um, you know, we've, we've had a lot of karmic cycles um, moving this year. And as we move into next year with the Pluto return happening for our country, um, you know, the, 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 the karmic stuff is, is going to continue to reveal itself. Oh, okay. So we're going to go with this card first, number 15, the, the muse, another uh, divine feminine card here. You can see her there is the kind of this mystical being that's coming up out of this orb and she's playing flute and the petals swirling around her. I mean, when we think of what the muse represents, it is the point of inspiration, right? It's, it's the place where the magic is born from, that, that womb, so to speak. So let's take a look and see what the guidebook says about this particular card. I love this Akashic Tarot deck. The muse plays a song of upliftment and imagination. There's that word of imagination. The petals of inspiration drift upon the wind, filling the air with light and creativity. This card shows a time of heightened resourcefulness and inventiveness for you. Any creative project, new or old, can receive exceptional energy now, both from you and from the universe. Call to the spirit muses and help them join you and the creator within to lift your project to the skies. So there's something that I'd like to touch on that came up actually in a, in a client session yesterday, um, and that's communication. Um, and this idea of our old ways of communicating are really starting, it is a structure that's also starting to fall apart. Um, I would say that where a lot of us are in our journey now, we're having a difficult time talking about it. Um, it's almost as if these experiences that we're having the, the English language or, or, or the language of, of word, wherever you are from, just doesn't seem to capture what we are feeling or what we are experiencing or our ability to communicate that to another. And one of the most important parts of creating and manifesting is not just the integration of these things that we're doing, but the expression of them. And so the throat and the sacral are very connected in that, where it's like the sacral is that creative birthplace and it moves up through the channel and out through the throat chakra in order to be expressed into the world. And this doesn't necessarily mean that you are using your physical voice. There are other modes of expression, other ways we can exercise the power of the throat chakra. And I think we're, we're being pushed into a place where we're finding new ways of communicating our experiences because we're not able to use our words the way that we really would like to. You know, there are some of us who have the gift of communication through words, but there are others who do not. And so really when, when you're exploring with curiosity, these impulses, right? These, these things that are coming through your channel, the desire to express, these things in some way to give birth to them it doesn't necessarily have to be in the written word or the spoken word. Perhaps your gift is music. Perhaps your gift is 
art in some way. Um, perhaps your gift is body movement. Um, perhaps your gift is caring for children. Perhaps your gift is caring for animals. Um, you know, there's all different ways that we can express our creativity because each of us has a very unique purpose and not everybody is meant to talk or write. You know, there's, there's all different other ways of expression. And so as we move into higher dimensions of energy, there's going to be different ways of communication. You know, they've always said that inside of the age of Aquarius, as we're discovering the relationship between spirit and science, and we're pulling down boundaries and new technology is born and all of that, that we really start understanding the technology we have within us right? The technology inside of our cells, inside of our DNA, inside of our brains, you know, the, we are the most complicated technology on this planet. Our bodies are so complicated that doctors can't even figure us out. And there's new things being discovered all the time. And so, you know, part of this idea is that we would to start to tune into telepathy, you know, and this is how we communicate with each other every day. We just don't realize it through our, our heart field or through heart telepathy. Um, but, you know, this ability to be more telepathic, to receive information in new and exciting ways and being curious about how you are receiving information and how you want to put it out into the world. So it looks like December is going to be real fertile soil for for creative expression and being revolutionary in how you approach that mode of expression that you that brings you joy and and makes that fire light in your belly and something you can get excited about. Okay, we're gonna pull one more from the Akashic Tarot. We got the Akashic Library. Oh yeah, where all the information lies. We each have our own guide into our Akashic library, our own personal librarian, so to speak. Um, I think most of us think that if we even know what the Akashic library is or the Akashic field or the Akashic records or the Akasha, whatever you are familiar with or not, this might be new language for you, but this is a place where we can access all of our information. It is where our book of life is held. And so it basically is everything that you have ever been, ever done, ever will be, or ever will do in all infinite time is inside the Akashic library, um, along with everything else going on in the world. Um, so this is another, uh, you know, it's the, the number two um, in the, in the tarot is uh, usually with the, the empress, I believe is it? No, the high priestess. I'm sorry. Um, usually the number two in the tarot deck is the high priestess. The high priestess is known for her incredible intellect, her intuition and her ability to balance emotion and, and her intellect, um, to be in the highest service to mankind and to herself and being able to stay balanced in, in that duality. Um, because we can tip one side to the other, just like this mother card talks about light attributes and shadow attributes um, that we often can give too much of ourselves and pull ourselves back into the shadow, meaning we're pushing somebody else out onto the front of the stage and feeling very comfortable in that role um, of being the behind the scenes person. When in fact, you know, the high priestess knows when it's her time to step forward and when it's her time to step back and she's okay with all of it. Um, and it's because she's tapping into her higher wisdom. She's tapping into her intuition. She's tapping into the knowingness that she is supported and that she has everything that she needs to have everything that she wants. Um, let's read it from the Akashic Tarot guidebook. But this particular card does match with the high priestess in the traditional tarot. Inside a great library, candles cast a glow upon the books on the tall shelves. A sage sits thoughtfully with an open book on his table and quill pen in hand. Sometimes this card can indicate writing or publishing a book. Here we talk about communication again. But this card also symbolizes a new initiation and ability to manifest a new life in every way. You have moved deeper into your Akashic records and into a higher self-awareness. 
further investigation may be required, but you now have a better understanding of your old motives and new purposes. It is a time of heightened intuition as well as greater self-creation. During this phase, all you have to do is add a little extra conscious effort to write your new records into the Akasha. To get started today, write a simple declaration about the future you wish to create and repeat it to yourself often. Then decide one thing you can do to make it happen and do it and do it. Anything can happen now. The breadth of the landscape before you rests solely on the scope of your imagination and your will to own it. When you receive this card, it indicates that a book will bring a message to you. Today, open any book that compels you to do so. Let it fall to any page. Read a passage there and reflect on the words throughout your day. Determine which relationship or situation in your life it addresses and don't assume that it's the one most urgently on your mind. The Akashic forces are active in every part of your life and your books are actually a part of the Akashic library. That's a cool exercise. I would say not only books, but if you're you know, a collector of decks pulling a card for yourself, or maybe you don't even have to pull a card, maybe you can just open the guidebook um, to a particular page and see what that message is for you. I mean, I do that pretty much every day anyway. Um, but I like this idea of, you know, it is kind of um, too, you know, inside the energy of the, the solar eclipse this month, um, that new moon, that new beginning, um, that initiation into our eclipse um, cycle, um, the first eclipse season in the eclipse cycle, and the kind of the initiation into this new chapter. Um, and this has been a theme that's been coming up really since June about being the author of your life you know, a conscious author of your, of your life and what this new story is going to look like for you. We've talked about that for months, right? Releasing the old stories, releasing the old narratives, um, start writing your own story and inside of this new mindset that you've developed with all of this work that you've been doing. Okay. So let's pull a couple, I'm going to, I, I want to pull this, um, sacred destiny Oracle, um, just because of the, the emphasis on this, you know, th this North node placement, uh, with Taurus and, and, you know, there's, I, I'm not, I say this all the time. I love astrology, um, but I am not astrologer and your personal chart, um, has everything to do with, you know, how these things are going to affect you. It's like, where is, Scorpio in your chart, where is Taurus in your chart, where is Pluto in your chart, like right now, you know, we just had Neptune go direct. Um, so where is Pisces and Neptune in your chart? Um, you know, these things are, are important to know how this is, you know, affecting you and, and your destiny, so to speak. Um, but from a collective standpoint, we really are in a, a place of what we could consider a pro productive time if we are willing to do the work. So this is a Denise Lynn deck. I absolutely love her cards. Her writing is so beautiful. Simplicity. Oh, and the white feather. I mean, that's, it's always a, a symbol of messages from our guides and, you know, there's, there is this feeling to inside of this, as we're starting new beginnings, um, and somebody actually, you know, had said this to me, and then I've said it to a couple of like the idea of keep it simple, stupid, right? Like going back to basics and it's, the right thing to do when we're in a transition space where we're feeling overwhelmed and we're not exactly sure where to get started because there's just so much that's out there in our field and we're feeling a little bit lost we're, we're still trying to get to know this new this new version of ourselves that's trying to come forward and so it really is just going back to basics um, and getting to know this new you. And a lot of the getting to know this new you is not a person that you've never met before per se. There's going to be familiar things. You're, it's just an integration of all of those old identities and old versions of self. You know, those, some of those you're, you're bringing with you that are still active. Um, but really just kind of getting to know where you are in your life right now and taking the time to do that. And, you know, there's no better way to do that than exploring through our creativity. It's like kind of indulging that inner child. It's 
a kind of a nice month to do that too. We've got the holidays um, this month, you know, uh, Hanukkah's finishing up um, and we've got Christmas coming and, you know, there's, it's just the, the general season of holiday tends to bring out that child in us. And we tend to be a little bit more open and playful. Um, we are looking for gratitude. We're looking for joy. Uh, it's just a nice season to kind of settle in to going back to basics and just allowing yourself to just kind of be and, and see what wants to move through you. So I, I never will pull a Denise Lynn card without reading from the guidebook because her writing is just so beautiful. The white feather. Imagine a single white feather illuminated against the blue sky, wafting on warm air currents as it flows to the earth with simplicity and grace. Both Native Americans and Egyptians thought feathers were messages from the sky gods. Chiefs would wear feathers to symbolize their communing with the creator. It was believed that when one wore feathers on one's head, messages from a human could travel to spirit. Likewise, messages and energy from the spiritual realms could travel back down to humans through the hollow shaft of a feather. Feathers are also wafted through the air to cleanse and purify a space. The sacred landscape wants you to know, to find a sacred simplicity and have clarity in your life, just do what matters. Release everything else, simplify your life, scan all areas and clear both internal and external clutter. Rest, rejuvenate, and only participate in what is truly important to you. Relinquish everything else. Do not delay. Just do it now. When your life is cluttered with objects, relationships, time constraints, and emotions, there's no room for spirit. There's too much static and too much stuff to connect to your soul. The smallest amount of clutter clearing can make a big difference in your energy. So that's it's it, it is a nice time to to clean out the old too as we move into a season where we tend to collect more stuff, right? So this, this idea of, you know, getting rid of what you don't need, not accumulating more stuff that you don't need, you know, really simplifying, going back to basics, uh, digging into your desires, you know, part of this emerging creativity and clearing out our birth channel has to do with identifying what those desires are. We cannot manifest anything unless we know what we want. So it's like, get to know where you are now, get back to basics, start that open conversation with your angels, with God, you know, um, get back to that, that sovereignty, right? We've, we've pulled so many of the Queens in the tarot, which I love the fact that they're called the sovereign of cups and that, in that Weaver tarot deck, um, you know, this idea of our sovereignty, we've been fighting to find it all year. It's like the, the only connection, the only protection we need is our sovereignty, um, which means that we are a whole person in God. And that is the only thing we need to know. Um, that we are entitled to be here because God put us here and we are creators and we deserve to have our desires fulfilled. We deserve to commune with one another, have that community, have those, you know, deep um, fulfilling relationships um, and to, to be here in this physical realm and be the creators and the masters of our destiny. So just getting back to basics um, to start this new journey. Truth is the other card that's coming out. Um, I mean, that's what this year has been about, freedom and truth. And understanding how this created, you know, it's, oh, I'm actually, this little picture on the card, it shows up in the clouds, the, the element of wind, he's blowing, um, blowing the trees, blowing the, the plane, blowing the, the clouds. So a deeper sense of truth does shake our foundations. It starts to create a new path, sometimes rebellious, sometimes revolutionary, um, based on this, this emerging sense of truth that we're finding. And it does create winds of change. Um, we cannot have one without the other. When we, dis when we become conscious of a truth, um, there is no other way to live, right? It's once we've discovered that, um, it's just natural to have the change begin. And so, you know, we've been in this change all year and this is, these winds of change are what is blowing us currently into the next phase, this next year. And that, you know, this, 
this truth is what is bringing the revolution, right? So it's all part of the plan. Okay, truth, the song of the wind. Wind is in the realm of the air elements, one of the four elements of life, air, water, fire, and earth. Air takes form in the oxygen we breathe, as well as in the breezes and the zephyrs. It also represents our communication skills. When we speak, it is the air that passes through our mouths that allows us to speak and communicate. Wind is prana, the source of life. As you communicate your truth to yourself and others, you'll find new energy and vitality emerging within your life. Be honest with yourself and speak from your heart. Find your truth. Listen for what is sincere and honest in others. One of the most difficult things to know is what is true for you and what isn't. Sometimes it takes sincere silence to find your inner voice of truth. But once you find it, let go of anything in your life that isn't authentic. Share your truth with others. Release relationships in which you can't be yourself and can't be real. Being genuine can allow your spirit to fly and the song of your soul to be heard in the universe. I mean, we've talked a lot about authenticity, what that means inside of this true self that's emerging for you. Sometimes it's hard because that that voice, that inner voice of truth, once we've discovered it, it, it wants to break free. And sometimes that means that we experience real wind of change in our lives, right? Where um, destruction starts to occur because we've had this new realization um, and to create conscious purpose around it, sometimes things need to change um, in order to bring that to manifestation. Um, and, you know, we also had Neptune just go direct um, it's, this is a time to, to really tune in to that inner voice, that inner truth, that, you know, true north within you, because more and more will be revealed um, inside of the trickery, inside of manipulation, inside of illusion, you know, all of these things are going to continue to fall apart because there's been a lot exposed in a very short period of time. Um, and as I said, things are really starting to not make sense to a lot more people. Um, and so, you know, this, this idea of really holding on to those things that you've discovered over the course of the year that really feel important to you, that is your true north, um, to not be swayed back into those old illusions, the, the old trickery, um, because it's, you know, like once you see that, you can't unsee it. And so really being true to that inside of this, this path. Um, this feels like a card that is obviously is for each of us, but this feels bigger. Um, this card for December feels like some revelations this month that are going to potentially, um, break open some new stuff, some new levels of truth that we haven't seen yet, or maybe we've started to get murmurs of it. Um, but more revelations, um, more things coming out. Um, I feel like you know, we're, we're on a mission now, um, for the truth. And I, I feel like December, there might be some breakthroughs. Um, so we'll see what happens with that, that, that card feels different than any of the other cards. When I pulled it out, it feels, uh, bigger, like I said, more collective, more macrocosm. Um, I'm going to pull one more card, um, before we close down the channeling for this month. I'm going to pull from Angel Wisdom Tarot by Radley Valentine. All right, give us one more card for this month. Okay. <laughs> How about two? <laughs> it's interesting, both of these cards actually um, that came out together have, a, have an interesting, um, I pulled both of these cards actually uh, for someone that I did a 2022 reading for this week as well. So it's interesting that they're coming out again. Um, they have similar energy. I've got the seven of air and I've got the, the four of water. Um, both of them I feel are encouraging a, a, a new sense of um, perspective. Um, uh, seeing the world in a different way, taking an opportunity to um, not 
not allowing the old ego voice, the old fear-based mentalities, um, the old victim energies to be your filter. It's, it really is encouraging us to see things in a new way. Um, and the, the seven of air uh, depicts a, a young man. Um, there's a, a group in the, in the back sitting around a fire, enjoying each other in community. And this guy is running away with everybody's swords. Um, you know, it, it's certainly a fearful thing. Um, this idea of, you know, I've got to take everybody else's to make sure that I've got mine. Um, this is an old mentality that we've been working on breaking down this idea of that, you know, I've got to get somebody else's piece of the pie, um, because there's a, there's a limited amount. Um, and that's simply just not true. You know, when we are in the process of manifesting, we will manifest everything that we need. We don't have to take from another. So this particular card, Raguel is the, um, the archangel that is associated with this. Um, he's very good at helping with communication. He's very good at being a mediator and arbitrator. Um, so a loss of peace of mind or personal freedom, take caution and be aware of others' actions potential material losses, make sure you are being honest with yourself, embarrassing secrets. Um, so this is a card of uh, what's being hidden coming to light. Um, it's, you know, my my son loves the Darman videos. And one of the messages that's frequently in that is whatever happens in the dark will come to light. So I do feel like this is another card of um, kind of bringing that to light, um, communicating that um and making it more known um the the loss of peace of mind or personal freedom we have to understand is really up to us we're giving that away so you know it it, it really has everything to do with where are we in our sovereignty and are we making more room for trust and faith and love or are we still hiding um inside of a fearful place and when we are in that position, when we are in a defensive stance, we are inviting war. When we are prepared and ready to battle, we will, we will call in the battle. So it just depends on where do you wanna be? And a lot of this can come inside of big change. We have an, a natural tendency to go into a defensive position um, to defend what's ours. And as we're moving more towards a community effort, more towards unification, we need to be careful how we're directing that energy, you know, and remembering war versus revolution, they can be about battle, or they can be about standing up for what you believe, and being able to do that in a community way, um, where it's more of a unified approach versus, you know, a uh, violent um, but we are at a place in time right now where um, the, the opposition or the oppressiveness is gaining and it's coming from those power sources um, where we're seeing more and more laws come into place, mandatory mandates, um, you know, all different kinds of things all over the world. And, you know, if it continues to take people's rights, um, you know, this is what the American Revolution was about. So it seems as if there is still some things up in the air um, as to how things could go in our world. Um, but it really is up to each of us to make that decision individually, how we are choosing to see our situation and how we are choosing to see the world and what we plan to do about that. The other card that came out with this was the four of water, which is failing to recognize a magical opportunity, missing the point, the distractions of daily life, <laughs> discontentment or boredom, lost in your own world, wake up. Um, so in this card, there's a young man sitting in front of a tree. He's got you know, three cups in front of him. Meanwhile, the angel's right behind him with the other cup saying, hey buddy, I'm right here. All you have to do is turn around, just acknowledge me right? Um, a missed opportunity that's right in front of him. Look at the fruit that's all over the ground next to him. It's like, all he has to do is reach out. It's right there. And all he's focusing on is what he doesn't have instead of the abundance and the guidance that is right there. So 
this card, I, I believe this is Shemuel. Let me check the book. I think this is Archangel Shemuel. Four of water. It's easy to, easy to become distracted by life. Your to-do list just keeps growing and the mind has a tendency to focus on the challenges you're experiencing rather than the reasons to be grateful. Unfortunately, it's those very distractions that can keep you from noticing the blessings and opportunities, even when they're right in front of your face. This card asks you to wake up, pay attention to what's going on around you, look for the mag magical messages coming your way and be ready to take full advantage of the blessings being offered to you. Um, additional meanings of this card, feeling discontentment, reevaluating your situation, taking someone or something for granted, daydreaming, a lack of motivation, lost in your own world, not caring what happens, boredom. Is it, it isn't always easy to see the blessings of the universe and what they are offering to you. Archangel Shamuel, which is the eyes of God, can help provide you with an awakening to make everything clear. So basically is calling in Archangel Shamuel to help you see things in a new way. So through the eyes of God, we see everything with love and gratitude and, and giving um, abundance. You know, so this idea of being able to see life through a different filter after so long being inside of this old programming. And, you know, the funny thing about the ego is the closer we get to an awakening, the, the more it will try to jump in our way. As we allow old pieces of ourselves to fall away and we start to shift into a more powerful version of ourselves, the ego gets scared because it doesn't know what that looks like. It doesn't have control factors there. It doesn't have defense mechanisms there. It doesn't know how to survive as this new version of self. It feels that you're making, you're putting yourself in harm's way by doing this. It's kind of like we've already, we've, we've already established, you know, what life is like and how to defend ourselves inside of it. Why are you going looking for change? Um, and so, you know, overcoming that um, requires us to really challenge ourselves to be curious, ask new questions, look at life in a little bit of a different way. And, you know, a lot of this is saying, you know, come through this creative channel, a more childlike, playful approach, looking from a place of creation, um, not being afraid to feel your feelings, to connect with others in that way, to connect with your intuition in that way, um, having more of a filter of God. Um, when you look at life, God is everywhere. And how many times do you walk outside and you're not even aware of the beauty that's around you every minute of every day, because you're so consumed by your own thoughts and so consumed about the next thing on your to-do list. I'm guilty of that too. You know, it's where so much of my anxiety comes from. I mean, I open my eyes in the morning and all I can think about is all of the things that are, that I have to do, um, you know, instead of just being present in the moment and knowing that you will move through the things that need to get done, but that you can choose to do it in a joyful way. And so December really is encouraging our, us to take some time to integrate this new self that is emerging to revel in its newness in its youth in its possibilities and the adventures that this new self can have because you're approaching life in a brand new way. And when we see life through different eyes, everything changes, right? Truth emerges in a new way. Our truths change when we start looking at things in a different way. So, you know, there, there's a lot of development and integration happening this month, but it feels safe. And it feels safe because we've reached a more confident place within ourselves and potentially we're starting to develop some communities now where we feel safe, um, places we can go, people that we can talk to, resources that we have discovered that are really good for our mental health, our emotional health, our physical health, um, you know, allowing ourselves to be truthful with ourselves for the first time and, and not, and allowing ourselves to be vulnerable with those people that we love by, you know, communicating those truths to them. Um, so you don't have to hide anymore. There doesn't need to be a false sense of self anymore. You can really be authentic. Um, and we're all feeling a little safer doing that with this mother energy that's coming in. Um, so enjoy this month and do the best you can to revel in the, the opportunities, the new discoveries, the new adventures, 
um, the new things that are going to be coming your way. Don't stop being curious. Don't stop learning. Um, look to explore the world, you know, through these new eyes. And it really does become a whole new journey that you get to be a conscious author of. And, you know, part of our community effort and our unity consciousness is sharing this with each other um, from a place of humility and not that, oh, I have something that, you know, well, this worked for me, so you should do it. And, you know, I did this, so everyone else should do it too. That's not what this is about. This is about sharing with another, you know, on your journey, how you found yourself. And now you're just grateful to be able to share this new version of yourself with this person that you love. Um, and that, you know, maybe you encourage them to embark on their own journey, but it will be theirs. You know, it's not for us to control another person's journey. That's the shadow side of the mother, right? Where it's like, oh yes, I want you to grow. I want you to go be the best version of yourself, but you have to do it my way. <laughs> I have to tell you how to do it. Um, or you have to do it the way I did it. Right. So that's, that's not what this is about. You know, it's that everybody gets to explore their growth and their expansion um, in their own way. And that um, we can celebrate that with them and, and support that with them. So much love for your December. Happy holidays to everybody, no matter how you celebrate or where you celebrate. Um, I'm going to be doing a um, 2022 uh, reading in January instead of a monthly forecast. Um, and for those of you who want a preview of that, be sure to join Robbie Kearns and I um, this month, actually December 16th. It's a Thursday evening at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be doing it via a Zoom webinar, so you can tune in from wherever you are in the world. And it will be recorded, so for those of you who cannot attend live, um, you will get your recording, so you'll still get to uh, participate in all of the cool things that we're going to be doing. We're going to be talking numerology, we're going to be doing energy attunements, we're going to be doing healings and meditations, energy balancing, goal setting, um, some spiritual coaching, and then we're going to be ending the event with a uh, tandem card reading um, forecast for 2022. So it should be a lot of fun. Um, encouraging you guys to, to come get your ticket. You can visit guys guidancefromgratitude.com under upcoming events and workshops. You'll see it, a New Year's Revolution workshop with your angels. So come and join us. It's going to be a ton of fun. Um, as always, if you need help on your journey, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can visit me at jennyisrael.com or you can come find me on Instagram or Facebook and set an appointment to uh, get a little guidance and, and some healing on your journey. So um, my best to all of you for a spectacular ending to your 2021, um, celebrating this new opportunity, this new beginning, this new chapter, um, this new phase that we're all entering um, and that we're all entering together. So until next time, thanks for tuning in.